What's going on people and welcome back to another player versus player. It's been a while since I did the last one. Reese James versus Trent Alexander-Arnold was the one that won the last vote. So this is what we'll be doing today. Both current players. Good thing, another good thing about this series is that you can have retired players against current players and current players against current players or retired players against retired players. So it's very flexible in that sense. Um, and we haven't had a ton of current players versus current players so far. So this could be an interesting one. I haven't um, included things like legacy and career in the current ones because both of these guys are still quite young and have a lot of years left. So they won't factor into the categories on that on this one, but I've got some others to replace them anyway. So let's get into it. Both right backs, obviously, both in contention for the England spots. Big battle that they could have throughout their career, fighting for that spot. Once Walker retires, especially as well. I know you can have Trippier there, but you could also play on the left if you needed them to. For England but these two are kind of the next two in line and if they can both prevent and stay clear of injuries which they've both had trouble with then it could be very interesting passing some of these I'm gonna have to come back to later on because I, I can't call it at all in terms of passing I think Trent's a bit more um, takes more risk with his passing he's a bit more I would say forward thinking but it doesn't mean that he necessarily always pulls it off I think Reese is forward thinking, but I think he's a little bit more cautious with the ball. I don't actually know their completion rates in terms of percentages for passing rate over their careers and just individual seasons. I'm actually going to give it to James for passing because I think he would have a higher percentage um, in terms of successful passing. But it depends on what you're looking for because Trent takes more risks and when they come off, they look world class. But I'll go James for passing. Creating and assists, again, I don't have the numbers for this in terms of career, but I think that they're both very adapt in this position, in this category. Both more than capable in this category. I think Reese is so undervalued and underappreciated in terms of what he does for Chelsea. With creating and assists as well in their fullback position, in or wing backs if you want to look at them like that. Trent said he takes more risks, he might mess up more. But when it comes off, it looks world class. But I think when James is missing for Chelsea, they really, really miss what he does. I don't think anyone else does it in that team. Similar to Trent at Liverpool, but I feel like this season, like if you're doing it off of this season, even though Reese has been injured a lot, when he has played, I think he's been better than Trent. So it depends what you're basing it on over their careers. I'd edge it to Trent, but only slightly. Crossing, again, I'm going to have to come back to crossing because... That's a hard one for me. Goals is an interesting one when I looked the stats up for this because I wasn't sure how many they both had. Trent had 15, and James had 20. So not a lot in it so far. They're both still pretty young and got quite a long career ahead of themselves if they can stay and prevent the injuries. Off of the numbers alone, I have to go with James for goals. Heading, um, both of them not fantastic at heading, but I would edge it to James. Um, I feel like he's a bit more aggressive in that sense and doesn't, doesn't shy away from the ball as much as I think Trent does in terms of getting battered or clattered in a, in a challenge from aerial. Um, so I would go with, with James for heading. Dribbling, James for me. Um, I think Trent is capable, but I think Reese is more all-rounded in terms of what he can offer to his team on the pitch. Um, and I do think he's a better dribbler. So tackling, again, I would edge it to James. I think... Well, I say edge it. I think James is quite steps ahead in terms of the aggression and defensive work that he does compared to Trent. Um, and I think his tackling is more ferocious, more successful. So I give tackling to James. Bravery, again, James. I think you see Trent shy away sometimes from um, tackles, 50-50 challenges, um, aerial challenges. I do think Trent at times shies away. So I'd give bravery to James. Aggression. Trent gets in a lot of arguments on the pitch, but I don't think it's necessarily because he's so fiery in the challenge and the tackle. It's more just he feels like he shouldn't be getting challenged at certain times how he is, which you shouldn't be a footballer if that's the case <laughs> because you can't moan when someone clatters you. For me, aggression for me has to be James. Again, I think he is by far leaps and head in terms of this category. When you see him on the pitch, he looks more up for it, more comfortable with them battles and 50-50s and just being aggressive and nasty. I would give it to James. Athleticism, again, I think Trent's pretty athletic, but 
I think overall, defensive, attacking, strength, James for me. Influence, now this is a new one I've added, and this just means overall influence in the game, whether it's defensively, attacking wise, creating an assist, goals, overall package basically, and how they influence high pressure games, high pressure situations, winning things like Champions Leagues, Leagues, Cups. And I think this one's very tough again, because I think Reese is so important to Chelsea as Trent is to Liverpool. I think I'm going to come back to that one. Agility, I would give it to Reese again. I, I don't think Trent is that agile. He's more of a specific, he's a, he reminds me a bit of Beckham. He's more of a specialist in a, in a certain area of the pitch. And that is set pieces, um, dead balls and, and delivery. So I don't look at Trent the way I look at Reese in terms of overall agility on the pitch and how they, they turn quickly. And So I would give agility to James. Awareness, Again, Reese for me. I think we've seen this season more than ever with Trent. Defensively, he gets caught a lot. Whether it's on the counter or just build-up play. Because he likes to get forward so much and pretty much be a winger, he always leaves that space open. And he hasn't got a ton of recovery pace to get back either. So for me, this one's quite an easy one. Um, it has to be James. Interceptions, James again for me. I don't think Trent really reads interceptions and, and passes and intercepts them early enough because he's I think he's too thinking about going forward all the time first of that and the downside of that is he gets caught a lot whereas Reese does attack a lot but he also knows when to attack and stay back where I think Trent doesn't as much interceptions James technique both fantastic at free kicks I've got to be honest the cr crossing technique both elite uh, passing first touch control I think there's not a lot in it between either of them I would edge it to, to Trent for that though Free kicks, difficult one again. I haven't actually got the numbers of, of how many free kicks they've both scored, but off the top of my head, I would imagine that, that Trent has scored more, that Trent probably takes more, and Reese has been injured more. So it depends on how you're looking at it, if it's over the whole career or recently. Um, I would edge this one to Trent. Trent, James for me, I think he looks, um, he's built a little bit like Shakiri or someone, like he's short but stocky and just looks like he's in the gym. So for me, strength, easy one, James. Trophies, Trent's got seven, whereas Reese has got three. So for the numbers and respect alone for what he's done, I'd have to give it to Trent on trophies. Leadership, I don't really look at Trent as a leader for the Liverpool team. I know he's one of their main players when he's involved. I think Reese is more of a leader for Chelsea than, than Trent is for Liverpool. Now it's perception, your own views on it, but I do see if you have to give the captaincy to one of them, regardless of what team it was for, I think Reese is more of captain material than Trent is, so I would go with, with James for, for the leadership. Positional sense, um, especially going back to awareness, I think Reese is a lot more adept. Um, he's a lot more capable, I think, in terms of knowing where he's got to be on the pitch to help his team at time, times where it's crucial and vital, so I would give that to Reese. And then defensive responsibility, similar to, to things like positional sense and awareness. This just means how important they are to their team. I know they're both attacking in their position, but at the end of the day, first and foremost, their bread and butter is meant to be defending. I know people say Trent isn't a defender, but on paper and his actual title, he's listed as, as a defender. So they're both very attacking, but defensive responsibility in terms of the overall package, last minute blocks, goal line clearances, leading from the back, organising from the back as well with it, with the other three, if they play a back four, being vocal. I would give it to Reese again. I just think that Trent really has exposed himself this season as a defender. Um, I think he's got a lot of room to grow there. I think he can get better in that aspect, but he definitely needs to stop bombing on so much to get better and focus on that. A lot of Liverpool players have been terrible this year, but I think Trent has definitely stood out as one because he gets caught out so much. So for me, defensive responsibility has to go to Reese. So let's go back to the two that I've left so far. Crossing, I think Reese is very underrated with his crossing. I think Trent is one of the best ones. I'm actually gonna give the crossing to Reese. And then influence on a game. Reese is so important for Chelsea, I really do. I know Trent is for Liverpool, but he's not shown it this season. And even though Reese has been injured a lot, I think when he's come back and featured even for a game here and there, he's shown what Chelsea are missing when they don't have him. Whereas I don't think Trent has done that. So influence as well, I would go with Reese. I wasn't sure how this would end up, and it looks very one-sided, I've got to admit. Passing, Reese, 1-0.
Creighton and assist Trent 1 all. Crossing James 2 1. Goals James 3 1. Heading James 4 1. Dribbling James 5 1. Tackling James 6 1. Bravery James 7 1. Aggression James 8 1. Athleticism James 9 1. Influence James 10 1. Agility James 11 1. Awareness James 12 1. Interceptions James 13 1. Technique Trent. 13-2, free kicks Trent 13-3, strength James 14-3, trophies Trent 14-4, leadership James 15-4, positional sense James 16-4, and defensive responsibility James 17-4. That looks horrible and ugly for Trent, but I'm honest here, I like Trent, but I do think he's fell off a cliff in the last season especially. Liverpool in general have anyway, but what he was doing a few years back. He looks like a ghost of that player now. And even though Reese has been injured a lot, like I said, when he does feature, he looks back on it, even if he gets injured again. I wasn't sure how this would end up, but it's a lot more one-sided than I thought it would be. 17-4, that's crazy. Um, I'm surprised myself. And I weren't sure how it was gonna end up. I thought Trent would have a lot more on this, and he hasn't. So let me know your categories and your voting system and what your final score was for this, guys. And don't forget to go over to the community tab for the next player versus player polls to have your say on which ones you get to see next. I've got to do a preview for the Barcelona game coming up for the Europa League. There's some new Premier League predictions coming as well, guys. Thick and fast, lots of football. Enjoy your night, guys. Champions League starts tonight as well. Enjoy the football, guys. I'll see you guys soon.